repair, which was a whole lot easier to do. Um, this particular system had gutters underneath the barrels and all the water drained back to it. Um, then it, the light bulb went off and I started using just an emitter. Now, if you think about those grips, if you're thinking about dirt garbing, what do you what do you do when you do drip irrigation? Drips on each one of those plants, right? Okay, so what we were thinking was that, yeah, we need to water at the base of each one of those plants. Well, it was a great idea, except this is gravel. And when you put water in gravel, it, it sinks its own level. The water stays level. It doesn't pile up at one end like snow drift. But it took us a while to think, think that thing through. So um, I worked on this system for quite a while, and, and one of the other guys that worked with me was a guy named Travis Hughley. Um, and we came up with this barrel concept, even though James DeCorn had done it uh, some years before. These tubes here uh, had an evolution, and uh, when we big, do the big system, I'll show you that evolution. These were to determine the water level in each one of these uh, pipes, and we got to sticking plant cuttings in it, and it's the most fantastic thing for rooting almost anything of plants that you can imagine. Um, so then we changed uh, the delivery system from a pump to a siphon. Um, this is the siphon. This is one of the early models of the siphon. You'll see a later model out here. Um, and simply what happens is the water level rises. It comes up this pipe, flows down this tube. Water is just like Cairo syrup. It likes to attract more Cairo syrup, more water. And so if you know if you ever filled your kid's swimming pool and left the hose in there come out the next morning and it being dry, you, you got to experience siphons firsthand. Um, this is the this is the siphon system disassembled, so you can see how it goes together. Um, this is a picture of some of our fish, and if you look very carefully right there, you can read the lettering on the Barnett pump, and that's four feet deep. So it does an incredible job of cleaning the water. Um, so then we stopped feeding using fish food, and this is a brand of duckweed called Giant Duckweed. And we later determined that there was a better, and that was Lamanche. Uh, which is more of a natural, um, occurs naturally in nature all throughout Texas. Uh, we, were, we were feeding the duckweed. Um, I'm going to go back, and, and you see this nice little thing here? That's a horse biscuit. And if you understand what a horse biscuit is, okay, we don't need one Kind of like a cow chip? So they were floating around the system, and I contained them all. Okay. Yes. Uh, so I contained it all in a little floating system, and that worked absolutely great. Um, this is Travis Hughley. Um, he has a group called Barrelponics, which um, you can write that down, or you can just simply Google Barrelponics. Um, we also have one, and it's called Aquaponic Farm. Um, very, very low traffic, but the same manuals are free for downloading. We're updating all those manuals. This is a small barrel conic unit, and you'll see the one outside is very, very similar to that, but extremely compact. Um, his system right here uses a commode flush, and this little bottle filling up, and I always call it the Rube Goldberg. It looks really <laughs> neat. Uh, occasionally, Murphy uh, takes over, because you have fishing line on a pulley, and, well, okay. You know what Murphy does? Yes? I have a question. I'm looking at the system. It looks so little. Like, what are you growing there? Well, this is his. He called this his small barrel ponics, and this was really designed as a demo unit for classrooms. Oh, I see. Or for somebody that is an apartment. And when you go out into this one, you're going to see the same thing, okay. only actually in a, in a little bit more compact um, nature. Um, this is an, another one we built using 55 gallon barrels, took it to Mexico, and they duplicated it. Mm -hmm. Uh, down in Rionosa, and they ended up doing a huge system that fed 500 kids. So um, this this increased to a 10,000 gallon fish tank, and um, he was I think he was raising 5,000 tilapia a week um, in, in 10,000 gallons in main fish tank, and they had another 10,000 gallons adjacent tanks that were all breeder tanks. Um, so as you can see, um, this is our super small system. This was a kind of a, we did this for a lady who was very, very handicapped, and it was so she could get her feet in under it. 
uh, in her wheelchair, and you can tell it's doing just fine. And of course, our dirt garden is in the background. And in that system, we had herbs and other things growing, and the systems with Travis, he has very large basil farms because his wife likes doing those type of things. So herbs and tomatoes and peppers and things like that do very well in the system. About the only thing that we have found that does not do well is um, Travis has had is because okay. this is in a greenhouse and a greenhouse environment is more humid than other environments and especially when you add the water and the amounts so you have to pick which varieties you're growing like the greenhouse cucumbers do well but some of the cucumbers that are developed for the dirt don't do well in that environment so plants that can deal with the more humid environment do better and then, of course, you can grow your cucumbers if you have a system outside, like, like the one I'm fixing to show you is. This is an eight-barrel system, and I, when we put the system in here on the big system, I'm not sure if we're going to put a six or an eight. I've got to do some measuring. But um, my system will actually um, power up either one uh, with the same pump. Um, you, you, you can grow almost anything in here. Um, plants that don't like their feet extremely wet um, don't do well. Uh, plants that don't care, um, you know, it, they, they grow fantastic. Unbelievably, carrots uh, do great. Uh, turnips do great. And you would think, oh my goodness, I can see all those little knobbies from the gravel. Actually, it was the most perfect carrots I ever grew in my entire life. I don't know why that the, that the gravel doesn't in it. So, anyhow, it doesn't. This is a highly stylized um, showing uh, recirculation aquaponics and I have another one that will be following this but what happens is the pump pumps it up to the what we call the dump barrel the siphon takes over dumps it into each one of these it drains out and drains back into the fish tank very very simple system uh, we don't glue any joints in in our entire system except the top of the siphon the very very top of the siphon and uh, the bottom of the barrel so they don't leak Everything else, all the pipe can just slip together. That way you can pop it apart, clean it if you have to. This is a, a, the same system, um, and we like to sink our 250-gallon tanks in the dirt. That way we get the full 250 gallons instead of just half of that. Um, this is the same system that pump, pumps it up into the dump barrel. The dump barrel sucks it out with a siphon, delivers it to all the barrels, and it comes straight back. This is a side view, and this is a top view. So you can see it's a very, very compact system. Uh, we designed it where it would snug up to garages and the sides of houses. Um, and you'll notice this system over here is also, and it's, it's doing extremely well. I think everybody that has seen it has been really uh, happy with it. Yeah. This is uh, Gloria's father system. We went to visit, and we were talking about it, and he goes, oh, yeah. I said, well, you know, Disneyland has one. I go, yeah, they consulted us about it. <laughs> so, and there's a 10-pup system out there. But this is simply a 250-gallon IBC container. You've seen those on the back of pickup trucks for water. Um, they also have chemicals coming in sometimes. You have to be a little careful about what you get. Um, these are simple 55-gallon barrels. They, they held um, uh, cleaning materials such as soap. And I don't know what this barrel had it, but in its former life, it was a trash can. So this particular system was built from wood that we found around his place. Um, I think we spent about 30 bucks, uh, 38 bucks on the pump and whatever plumbing he didn't have around the system. Um, it looks totally different today because, of course, this was the day after it was built. And you can tell we just put the fish in because they're still in the bag. Um, but this is a different type of system also. This is one I did in Burnett, Texas with 30,000 gallon, um, what we call a horse tank. Um, this was our outflow, actually the inflow and the outflow right next to each other. Um, this was the dump barrel stand for what we call the big tank system. Um, this is full of dump barrels and each of those dump barrels has a siphon. 
so you can tell we were using eight systems of grow beds and I was actually going up to ten grow beds on those. This is Gloria Welding. Um, All together we used um, pipe from um, drill stem because I had a ton of it. So you can tell you can build it from anything. We just used what we had at hand to build it. This is the barrel stand upside down. We were painting it. And by the way, I'm not ever allowed to paint. <laughs> I, I get paint everywhere. 